<laughs> what's up guys yeah what's up guys welcome back to the channel i have my special guest tonight and i'm so honored to have you guys on we have janelle kerfman and hiro koda the stunt coordinators of cobra kai season one two and three hey. you know and hiro absolute pleasure to have you guys on very excited to be here. here for sure and uh First of all, I gotta say, honestly, congrats on the SAG nomination. You guys absolutely killed it this Thank season, you. and all of the seasons. But yeah, I'm, I know. I think you got a dinner to attend a little bit later, and uh, obviously, all around uh, celebrations there. So yeah, first of all, well done for that. Um, obviously, just as before we were live, we were just saying about how uh, Cobra Kai is just blowing up. You know, uh, we had a, a launch on YouTube Red. And then obviously you went to Netflix and you guys felt like you'd, it was like you're in a secret club and now bang, it's like the world knows about this thing is like Thanos, it's huge. Uh, so um, just to kind of give, get a bit of like a backstory in you guys, um, how did your career start off and like what truly inspired you to start this kind of work for you guys? I um I, I got my SAG card when I was 12 years old doing a national commercial. I had nothing to do with martial arts. I was doing a high C drink commercial. That's how I got my SAG card. Um, and from that, my father trained some uh, stunt folks. And uh, the stunt folks that he trained took me to uh, a stunt training. It was like a rehearsal for a film. Um, and I got to meet all these like incredible stunt guys from Stunts Unlimited, which years later I became a member of, which was really cool. Um, but that was the most incredible thing I ever saw. I was 12 years old and I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> from the moment I was 12 until I decided that's what I was going to do. I, I, it's all I wanted to do was be a stunt man. Um, talked my parents into, uh, let me get my GED. I quit school a little early, got my GED and I moved out to California to be a stunt man. I had no idea what I was going to do or how, to do it, <laughs> but that's what I did. Um, moved out to California. Um, and was trying to figure out things. I did a bunch of uh, Roger Corman films. They were really quick films that we did uh, very quickly, like a full feature in like two weeks. And then uh, I fell into doing the Power Rangers. I did the first seven seasons of Power Rangers. And then from there, mm. just met so many different people and uh, progressed through where I'm at today. You know, speaking about Power Rangers, I mean, uh, obviously, as a kid growing up, that's the one thing I absolutely love growing up. Uh, so is it, were you the, did you do something for the Blue Ranger and the Green Ranger? From what I've researched, did, that's what you did. Yeah, I was, um, I was blue and green quite a bit doing the fight stuff. And then when they had motorcycles or vehicle stunts and things like that, I would jump in and be uh, red. And I even played yellow a couple times, but. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, and then I played like, I don't even know how many different monsters and creatures. And everybody, the stunt team, there was a Alpha stunt, stunt, stunt team from Japan was the main right. core group that was there that uh, I became a, a good friends with all of them and you know the guys that worked full time like myself we would just all sort of everybody would do everything and it just didn't really matter but the Power Rangers is very interesting because each of the characters has very specific moves and how they have to stand and how they have to everything is very important and um, so that was a little bit nerve wracking because they were like, all right, try this and like, see how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was, that was difficult, but it was a lot of fun. It was a good, great experience. And, um, you know, it was interesting running around in spandex in downtown LA, but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Like, um, I mean, I was a big, obviously Red Ranger was what a lot of lads like who they looked up to. And then the Green Ranger comes in and he's just like an equivalent um obviously jdf is amazing as he is so talented obviously you're a big martial artist as well um one question that i have personally for you is there's um a sequence in um the power rangers where the green ranger and the white ranger fight were you in the suit when they had that massive fight oh my goodness i, I don't know if you remember this i was a long time ago <laughs> i couldn't even <laughs> I fought so many different people and we did so many fights every single day. It was 12 hours of full fighting all day long. 
wearing spandex and having to like wreck to the concrete with no pads. Um, it was, uh, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I mean, we did fights where we were fighting rangers that became bad and good rangers that came in and we just, I mean, and there was so many different monsters. I, have, I, I, could, I can't even remember if that's something I was part of. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I just thought, because that fight scene is so badass because they're like literally equivalent, you know, like the green and the white ranger. Um, obviously, JDF um, can do the martial arts and everything, so I wasn't sure if he was doing those scenes specifically, but I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, but yeah, you know, um, yeah. Sorry, ahead. you go ahead. No, no. Early on in that, I mean, the earlier casts in Power Rangers, they all were very uh, martial arts. They had a heavy martial arts background. Um, mm. As the show progressed, the people that came in, there was different people that had different martial arts. Um, Mike Chatterout, but um, he was part of. Uh, Lightspeed Rescue. I don't remember what season that was. He's a, you know, he's a huge martial artist that I grew up with competing with. And um, so, I mean, just every year it just changed. And still to this, that show's still going today. <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, that I just can't believe they've kept it going and it's still good. Like they haven't, like, it's not like ran this course and yeah, it's over. I know they took inspiration from, I think the, the I think it's the Japanese versions and obviously they Americanized it. But it's interesting I'm, because Early on, they the uh, they used a lot of Japanese footage, and as the show progressed through the years, they started using more and more of our own footage. But even today, they still use the Japanese footage, and they every year it changes cast. I mean, the same stunt team, Alpha Stunts, is still there doing it. Um, I, I believe they're still shooting in, in. I think they're in New Zealand now shooting. Mm. So, um, but great group of guys and talented and just like those are the guys that like kind of brought me up in this business and taught me a lot of what I know and how I kind of work and you know I owe everything to the those guys on the Alpha Stunts team and Koichi Sakamoto was like one of my mentors who used to be a director I think he's now just a producer on there but uh, all those guys amazing yeah for sure um I mean, I swear, no. Anyone that works in this kind of industry, that's specifically in the stunt team, you always seem to have badass names, like your names as well. It's like I can imagine your names just showing up as like stunt coordinators. That I love. Hey, it. You pronounced it correctly, so I'm stoked with that. Oh, I'm so <laughs> glad, man. Like, uh, I, I don't know how people kind of say it, but it's I've heard of it. I've heard your name being pronounced before, but have to get it right. If someone calls you hero, you're like, no, bro, that's not how you say it. <laughs> Punch through the thing, you know? <laughs> Most of the time, that's how they say it is hero. But you said it correctly, Hito. That is correct. <laughs> All right, awesome. I'm really glad I said that right. And Janelle, yeah, you've, um, you're have you awesome and badass as well. And obviously, you guys are like a power couple. Um, what was it like for you uh, growing up and obviously becoming who you are today? Um. I stumbled upon stunts, unlike Hito, I didn't even really realize it was something that you could do as a living. I was a gymnast and a dancer growing up and a college athlete. And um, when right before I made the transition into stunts, funny enough, I was also running around downtown LA in spandex, but it was as a Laker girl. <laughs> I was dancing professionally for the Lakers. and. My Yo, dad. I'm a Lakers fan. That's yeah, so cool. Awesome. <laughs> yes. Um, and my dance agent at the time had called me and said, hey, they're looking for tall, athletic women who move well for some movement in this big feature. We can't tell you what it is. It's totally top secret. Right. So I went in and I did some movement tests. We did quite a bit of like creature movement, stuff that felt very natural as a dancer and an athlete. And um, sure enough, it led into doing some motion capture work. I ended up doing a screen test and it turned out to be the first avatar with Jim Cameron. And so that sort of just led into this whirlwind of being just shoved into this world of film, working on this huge feature. I'd never worked on anything. I'd done a few commercials dancing and music videos, but I'd never like actually done a movie. So as being part of the motion capture team, we worked very close with the stunt team. We did a lot of wire work and it was very physical and that sort of thing. So I was part of that for three years. And it wasn't until after that movie, I realized like, oh, wait a second, it doesn't actually take three years to shoot a normal movie. <laughs> it was just the one that <laughs> Um, so that just sort of led into that transition of, I saw, you know, the stunt team and I saw what they were doing and 
the little bit of it that I got to do on that film, I just, I knew it was what I wanted to do next. So sure. it was, it was a natural transition. And now I say it's the job I never knew I always wanted to do. And I just, I absolutely love being in the stunt industry and being in film in general. Right. And um, in the 21st century, obviously things are getting more insane with technology, you know, doing these stunts, uh, things, uh, it just becomes more crazy. I know there's obviously a lot of CGI now and it's probably in some circumstances, it's not as good as it used to be. It's obviously more about props and legit stunt devils and all that kind of stuff. And of course there's loads of uh, stunt work now. And the uh, reason why I love Cobra Kai is they, they really, you know, show you the, the combat and you feel like you're a part of that. You know, it's not just throwing out all these graphics and that and, like the things you've been a part of, like Marvel, they really do great on all these stunt sequences. And uh, I know, um, you know, there's, there's so many amazing films in the action genre. Like, uh, you know, you got Extraction on Netflix recently came out of last year. And then uh, I don't know if you guys are like big on Marvel DC, but obviously, Janelle, you've been part of it. Um, but I'm a, I'm a huge nerd in that way. So I obviously, uh, I really take to all the sequences and stuff. Um, but yeah, so you guys, um, obviously, like we were saying, you have a really impressive resume and then Cobra Kai is now where it is. Um, season three, what are your, what are your expectations for this season? Cause obviously, uh, you really built on season one and two and the sequences were phenomenal. And I know that it was obviously very tough to do that school sequence and everything, but yeah, how, what were your expectations going into season three for the stunt sequences and that? <laughs> it, you know, I mean, for us, going from season one to season three is just like every year trying to, you know, we want to be able to top every year and do something that's new and innovative and creative and just keep the the energy and everything, just build and build and build with everything. That's, that, that is always a challenge. Uh, but the big three, John, Josh, and Hayden, they write such incredible stuff. Um, right. The stuff they put on page – just really like, I mean, that guides us where we're going with everything. So I, they're, they're, that part of it, we don't have to kind of worry about because they really amp it up themselves for us. And then from there, we we get to build on <laughs> what, I love we that. Like and what we need to put into it to to keep that action going and make it exciting for everybody. So yeah, I mean, um, in particular, you know, the the sequence at the Larusso household um, that was. Dude, that was crazy. You know, I thought seeing the school, you know, the school finale in season two, that was as crazy as it was. But that, you know, the whole one shot sequence um, in season three in that fight was absolutely crazy, dude. So well done to you guys for achieving that. Um, and uh, I heard that originally it was supposed to be outside. Is that true or is that just something that was out there? The, yeah, for the LaRusso house fight at the end of season three, we got hit with some weather over here in Atlanta right. and things changed last minute and we started to make adjustments in choreography and stuff that we had worked out with the fight. And it ended up actually being a lot more fun in the house because we had so much more to play with as far as props and just the way that house is even built. It's really cool. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's like the ultimate like high school battle as a house fight, <laughs> right? Like yeah. stuff and knocking over the Christmas tree and, and so having was, so many people and then just walking through with like Josh Hills telling us, you know, like whatever you want to break, let's break yeah. it. Let's break everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um yeah I just uh do you guys have like a a favorite fight scene from not necessarily like working on it but just like viewing it because obviously you put in so much time and effort to get it right behind the scenes but like if, if you ever sat back and just watch one you're like damn that's gotta be my one you know my ultimate favorite is from season two with uh, miguel and hawk in the woods oh, yeah. oh that's, totally cool. that's one of my all-time yeah. favorite fights yeah. between the two of them and those two boys just like nailed that fight and it was, I was so proud of them. It was, Sholo had a, had a rough go at the beginning of it and me and him just stepped off to the side and I was like, 
you got this, Shola. You're like a proud oh, father, just oh, like that. Yeah. <laughs> he's so uh, he's. I mean, it's amazing how hard these guys, all of them, the cast, is just so hard on themselves. You know, when they're like out there performing, they just want to look the best that they can, and we do what we can with them, training wise, and you know, and I we know exactly what they're capable of doing, and we get them out there and really push them to their limits. And you know, that was a really special moment for me to see the two of those boys go at it, and they they did. I was so proud of them, so proud of those two guys. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's a, certainly a standout fight. I, I mean, for me, mine's more obvious, I think. The school fight and the end of season two, I just, there's so much, whenever I watch it, I still get goosebumps. And then the ending with Miguel falling over, like I've never failed to cry, even though- They I'm did my boy Daddy. He's like one of my favorites. <laughs> and yeah, and they, I couldn't believe that. <laughs> From beginning to end is an emotional roller coaster. It is. And yeah. then and there's so much happening and, and just our younger cast, are, they're such great actors and the way they just like mm. throw everything into what they're doing has been such a joy yeah. in training them and incorporating the fights and the story and pulling everything together. But I think also a little bit of it too is just the circumstances surrounding when we were shooting it and it was, you know, we were short on time and we, it was run and gun the whole time. So we were all sort of, you know, at, high level of, we were all operating yeah. on like our A game and zero sleep yeah. and barely time to eat. Um, <laughs> but it was just pulling through those sequences and then at the end, it was like we'd all been through battle together. You know what I mean? Because it's like you come out on the end of it and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe that yeah. we achieved that and that we did it. And then, so it's all sort of that comes back, comes flooding back whenever I, watch it it's still to this day is my favorite fight yeah i mean there's been some stuff posted with the behind the scenes and stuff after those sequences and just the, like the celebration everybody has is such a great mm -hmm. feeling to have everybody so happy of what we accomplished in that little <laughs> bit of time that's actually going to make it on screen it's yeah. just uh it's right. a feeling, so. yeah like i was saying earlier on like you guys um it was obviously really tough to do that sequencing because obviously you weren't allowed in i believe is it the weekdays obviously to film uh, yeah. at that college or school and then obviously you had a little time and to, to do that I mean that must have built on that intensity of the fight like we've got to quickly get this you guys have got to get this right like you can re you probably felt the intensity of the fight even before you started filming and and then of course it, it turns out to how it is uh, for preparation for the actors as you're saying um, obviously you guys just get better and better as, you know uh, performers Sorry, oh, that's all right <laughs> <laughs> is that the dog <laughs> This is live. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I was saying, um, yeah, with preparation for the actors and stuff, like, uh, how does it change each season? Because obviously they're getting more experienced. Um, like, do you sort of have to kind of change things up or is it kind of just like you have to balance the, the way you like training and everything? Yeah, it's um we do definitely have to balance everything out um the, the interesting thing is like the, the all the kids cast wise have had some of them had had some prior ex, uh training in martial arts before season one even started most of them when they did do anything they had it when they were like super little kids and they did you know they dabbed in it for you know six months a year or whatever they didn't really have a lot of extensive training so it left us with good things that they didn't come to us with already like bad habits already that they were kind of stuck to so we sure. got to mold everybody and 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 again going back to josh john and hayden they're writing and just developing each of the characters everybody's character was very important to us to develop a style for each of those kids. Um, obviously, Ralph Macchio and Billy Zapka, these guys, when they came, they're from Karate Kid years ago. Yeah. Their style needed to stay the same. That was very important to us. And and for them, not training that many years, 30 years later or whatever, they just needed, it was like riding a bike, he's got to get the cobwebs off and get them back in there. Yeah, and get the dust off. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, it, it came back quickly to them and they, they remembered what they had learned there. I think Billy continued training after the movies were done for a little while. So, you know, he had some uh, more training afterwards, but I mean, the, and, and those guys work just as hard as the kids. Martin Coe, he's one of the ones that work harder than I think anybody. And he is the absolute hardest on himself than anybody else. Cause he's just like, 
oh, I gotta make it all. He wants it to be so. <laughs> and, uh, so those guys' characters, we kept their fighting style the same, but the kids, we as we developed each of the kids' characters and their styles of fighting, it just progressed. And each season, they're gonna be getting better. And so it was just the more training we did with them, the more the better they got on their own anyway. So it just like progressed with the story through the seasons for us. Right. And like, uh, yeah, I was about to ask, like, um, yeah, was, I mean, like you said, the, you know, Martin, Zabka and Ralph, obviously they're a little bit older uh, and they haven't got the youth as the youngsters, but they work as hard. Was it a little bit difficult at any point where you kind of had to, I mean, preparation could be, was it any different to the youngsters and the, you know, the guys that have been there from Cry Kid or, uh, like, did you adapt training in a certain way or was it kind of just, you, you took the same sort of approach with them? No, it was, it was very different. Um, and even between the younger cast and um, the original cast, even between each of them, the training is very different. Our, our younger cast will usually, we'll bring them in, we'll warm them up together, we'll do um, some basic fighting drills, we'll do, uh, we'll do some gymnastics with them. We do, especially at the beginning, I do a crap load of stretching and conditioning. <laughs> I've heard about that. Them to do a lot of their own stuff, and the stronger they are to be able to get in, especially when we get into these long takes of fights, and you know, you're doing it over and over and over again, and I want them to have the stamina to look their best, and you can't do that unless you have a really good base of like strength and flexibility. Um, and it also keeps them from getting injured as well which is very important just for the longevity of, cause we have to, we have to have them for an entire season. So we try and just take care of them as best we can. Um, mm. But usually we, and especially if somebody has a fight coming up, you know, we'll pull them off and we'll work on choreography or we'll take the Miyagi dos and they'll start to work through some katas and more traditional Japanese karate type stuff. And then the Cobra Kai's will pull aside and we'll do like Muay Thai and, you know, some judo throws and jujitsu and things like that. They're a little bit more aggressive. Oh, so I love it. Their training in that sense is very different. And mm -hmm. then with Billy and Ralph and Marty, well, it's the same thing where we have just a different style of training because their styles are different. And yeah. we want them to be proficient and feel proficient, even if it's not necessarily choreography that they're going to be doing in film, whatever we can give them to help build strength and just get it in their body. You know, it's like speaking a language. The more yeah. you have, the easier it is to speak. And then on the day, if something changes or, you know, something comes up that we weren't expecting and it's like, hey, we need this move, we can throw it at them and they're prepared for it because they've been training for it. Yeah, and they have their own different mentality of how they approach everything too, of learning it. I mean, you know, Billy comes in and he'll go through it and just run it, run it, run it, run it, where, Ralph comes in and has a little bit more meticulous way of going through it where he learns the choreography, but he also like I've done several times where I've walked through the choreography for him and I'll just, he'll, he'll film my feet because he wants to see how my footing is and how my stances are through the choreography because he's not worried about where his hands and stuff are going. He wants to see what the footing is going to be. So he'll record that and then go back and study it on his own. And then when he comes back, it's like a whole different Ralph because he's like, gotten all that into his head and now he's into right. the choreography. It's like a different routine that he likes to go through. And then Martin Cove is like its own world of different, of how he wants to learn it and how he does, you know, retain everything. So it's a, uh, it, they're all very, very different. <laughs> it's, it makes sure, it yeah. interesting and hard because through all of that process, when we're in the middle of it and in the shooting process, we're like, having to prep while we're shooting multiple stuff going on all at the same time. So it makes it very, uh, very tough, but that's why they're sure. still doing the show. Cause it's just, it's really difficult to do it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, uh, like you said, those three are very different, just like their characters. And what you said there with the way Ralph and uh, Zabka prepared, that is so Johnny and Daniel. It I, is. I, I yeah. just think of that chop shop fight scene where, Johnny's like, yeah, let's do this. And Ralph's like, hold on a second, Johnny. We got to slow this down. <laughs> yeah. What was it like uh, preparing for that fight scene? Because obviously this is something that fans from the original Cry Kid hadn't seen yet. New fans are watching Cobra Kai. That was so iconic, like seeing them kind of team up together and 
to to work on a common goal, which was Robbie. Yeah, what was it like preparing and uh, working on behind the scenes with that specific fight? Yeah, uh, that that was a fun one to put together. And um, Janelle said many times, it's like it's very important to us, like the people that are going to be in the sequence, the stunt performers that were all the different mechanics and stuff in there. And if there's an actor that's in the sequence, we want those people there when we are getting into the choreography so that they're running the fights in the training hall with Ralph and Billy, because we don't want them to just run it with random folks. Because by the time we get on set, if there was somebody else, the timing and the feel of the a new person is completely different. So we bring all those folks in. Everybody learns it together, and everybody runs it just constantly, so they get their timing and all of that. Is very, so very important with uh, you know making this all come together. And plus the, the the speed of what we shoot and how quickly everything changes on the on a dime on set because. Oh, it happens all the time. You get there and you can prepare as much as you want, as best you can. And then you get there to set and they're like, oh, well, that thing wasn't there. So we <laughs> oh, did. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like we have to kind of just on the fly, just make a little adjustments here and there. And we try to keep everything as, you know, close to what we have so that we don't change too much on the day for our cast members. Um, Cause they have enough to think about just not even just doing the car, but they got all the choreography. They got to, do all the acting and the dialogue. Yeah. And we have so much to think about. It's, it's like, you know, so that makes it tough. Yeah, that in that fight in particular in the chop shop, we had got to a, the end of our day and we were on location for that fight, uh, which meant like we didn't have that location again. Like whatever we were gonna get there, we had to get that night and we right. ran out of time. So oh. I think it came down to like two hours. We had to like get, we hadn't really gotten through most of the fight. And that's one of the things that Hito's really great at is coming in and saying, okay, these are the pieces that we have to have in order to make this fight work. So if we can get this, it'll still be great. And that's what we did. And they, they shot all the pieces that we knew we had to have. And I have to be honest, it was definitely one of those fights where I was like, I don't know how this is going to turn out in the final edit. Like, I know right. what we <laughs> shot looked great, but did we get everything that we needed? And mm. were we too rushed? Was there not enough of what we needed? And then, you know, we saw it early on, the final edit. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> this is great. The guys did great, and it all looks amazing. So sometimes it's that, you know, magic of – performance in the theater that like it all comes together and you're like okay yeah it does yeah. really look fantastic i just that <clears throat> that fight scene um was just oh just seeing them team up for once and just seeing the way it happened and i just i, I love how johnny was just so up for it he's like it's a chop shop this is my common ground i know how to get way through this and daniel who's very you can see he just felt very out of place and he didn't really know how to deal with what he had these guys had big weapons and and stuff like that um but yeah that that fight was insane but then also the the reunion with daniel and chosen that was that oh, must have been oh, super fun to do that was what was that like meeting yuji and working with him as well I, i've known yuji outside of here um just right. from prior shows and um having him when i knew he was coming in it was like oh yeah i was so stoked to have him <laughs> yeah. and he, he wanted like he said as soon as i get there i want to get with you we got to train we got to train. We got to train. He just wanted to come into the training hall and get through and learn everything that he needed to do because he wanted to, you know, he he had to dust off those webs, <laughs> cobwebs, and get in there. And I, those <laughs> two, Ralph and, and, and Yuji, just like, I mean, they went, they were in the training hall and drilled and drilled and drilled. I was proud of those two for that. Oh, yeah. that they did so well with that fight, and they worked their butts off. In the amount of time mm -hmm. that we actually had once – Yuji arrived to Atlanta. It was uh, it was a quick process with him, but you know he has prior training. He moves well, even though he's older. He doesn't look like it. <laughs> no, he, no, I no. generally was like, did he just? It's like he's been waiting for this moment. He's so oh, prepared yeah. to beat the hell out of Daniel. Yeah, exactly. That's what it looks well, like. And he, I think he pulled something about halfway through the sequence, or something was bothering, him, and then he, he didn't tell us. So we didn't even know he was like <laughs> pushing through all of this with a minor injury, and we're just like, oh, no. at the end, and it's like, why didn't you tell us? <laughs> I can make it. I can get yeah, there. Yeah, no, it was an incredible thing on, on on set seeing the two of them go at it, and just from just. 
from Karate Kid 2 and then to see them together again going at it on our set was just – and the moment that he got him down and got to do the honk was <laughs> – yeah. it was for everybody. And the scene that Ralph and him together was – was really cool. It was yeah. a, it was a, it was a really special moment for I think everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, when I first saw the image for that scene, I was like, "They better do the honk. If they don't do the honk, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna absolutely lose my shit if they don't do the honk." Because that was like his moment, and our oh, Yuji did it so good and just so good. Totally scared the shit out of Daniel. It was so good. I loved it. It was. Um, but honestly, I think yeah, that's one of my one of my favorite fights i think you know daniel all of the preparation all the things he learned from miyagi he still couldn't you know fight chosen that easy it was so difficult um but yeah that that scene was phenomenal as well and um oh it's just the fights and what i love about the fights with cobra kai is like you get really different styles like you were saying earlier on with those guys having different ways of fighting and uh with um with all these fights, there's like a different sense of style to it. Um, even though Daniel had that team up with Johnny, he was he was obviously using Miyagi Do, but then when he's fighting Chosen, it's like it's like something else comes out of it. Although he's got the same style. Um, with scenes, do you? I know you say you try and stick to what you got, but do you ever try and throw something a little bit different, or have the actors ever thought could we try this to see if it worked a bit more effectively? Yeah, I mean, we are constantly throwing new things in there to say, hey, let's do it this way. Let's try it this way. Um, <clears throat> the big three write a lot of um, of their – in their stories, in the scripts, they'll write out – sometimes they'll write out a lot of the beats that they want to have in there. And then there's some stuff that they sort of don't really write and give us the kind of freedom to go and, and do what we would like to do with it. Um, but it's a very collaborative thing. Once we start putting things together, we break down these scripts and really pull out because story is very important to us with with everything, even with the fight. The story drives our fight as well in each of the characters. We don't want to just throw something in there because, hey, that was cool because it doesn't yeah. really make sense. We want it to be – we want it to make sense with the story and really give – the big three, their, you know, satisfaction of, of just finding their story. And so it's a collaboration with us with putting things together and with our team, our core team works really hard at everything that we throw at them. I mean, we beat the crap out of them all the time and, uh, <laughs> you know, putting these things together and then we'll shoot a pre -vis. We'll end up getting all the guys together. We'll shoot through a whole sequence, make a pre -vis, And then we present that to the big three and say, here's what we, this is our idea. This is what we want to do. And, they, you know, they'll come back with us with, we love this, that, and the other, and we go, <laughs> this. it's sort of a blueprint for us when we are on set, because then everything is sort of, we know how everything's going to be run, we know how we want to shoot it and cut it and 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 know what the, kind of the best angles we're going to get for each of the falls or what have you, and, and we go from there. It also gives us an idea of which moments are real, are essential for the actors, and we know that anytime, you know, when you know, shooting the previs that if you can see the, the stunt person's face, that's probably going to be an actor moment because you can see their face or if it's, you know, over their shoulder, you know, it's going to be um, a stunt double, but it, um, it helps, I think all the departments to know like, okay, this is what's going to happen. You know, there may be a breakaway or, and honestly, Cobra Kai doesn't use a lot of visual effects. Mm -hmm. This was one of the things I really mm -hmm. love about it. So it everything you see is practical, which I feel is very rare in even tele. It's certainly rare in film, but it's even more rare in television. And that's one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is um, doing everything practical. And even sometimes we'll see a cool move on a show or in a performance or something, and be like, "Oh, that's really cool. We want to use it." Okay, which character does it make the most sense to do something mm -hmm. like that? It's a really cool like judo throw. Well, yeah. I don't think we're gonna see Daniel do that. I don't think we're gonna see Rocky <laughs> or the Miyagi does. Let's see who from you know Cobra Kai or Eagle Fang would have that in their arsenal. So like Hito said, we always do try and make sense and don't want to. I mean, there's nothing more annoying than seeing somebody in a movie, you know, running and then doing some twisty triple flip to the ground, and it's like, well, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that didn't even really make sense there. Yeah, right. And um, I love what you said that, you know, these are very practical stunts and these fight scenes. And 
of course, like, you really feel that Karate Kid vibe with the fight scenes. Like, it was all them. They were doing all these fights. Uh, it wasn't overly fancy. It wasn't, like, over the top. Like, yeah, the triple spins and dramatic falls. It's really straight to the point, but it's it's so, like, it's, like, gritty in that way, which is why I like it. And I love how you guys have made to keep that 80s inspiration there because I'm, I'm guessing that was very important so people can feel that, yeah, Cry is still part of Cobra Kai, although it's something new. Uh, you, you're trying to keep it fresh but also balance it. Would you say that was quite a big challenge, trying to keep that sense of 80s presence and that style within all the fight scenes? It was and it wasn't because um, we also really wanted to push with like the newer generation of the new kids on the on the show, we wanted to push the new generation of martial arts because martial arts has changed from 30 years ago. And so mm. we wanted to show that progression of like 30 years later, how, I mean, at the tournament, you saw some, some different new stuff that's not really traditional from the 80s at all. Like one of the kids there was tricking in the- Yeah, party. Xander. That's like, like a good thing. You know? So being able to throw something like that in a tournament is okay because we're here now in this day and time. So we wanted to see how, we wanted to show the martial arts progression and how it all changed over the years. But also within what we're creating for each of these characters, we still want you, the audience, to feel that traditional Miyagi-Do, that traditional Cobra Kai from 30 years ago in their right. flavor of what each character has developed as their martial art, I guess. Yeah. Or their, yeah. So that's, it was a challenge. It's, it's, and it's, um, the, the hardest part is like, you, if you look from season one through season three, how many fights we've done, how many punch kick things can you do? It's like you gotta <laughs> like just keep like you know trying to make it new and fresh and change. Like okay, well we did this punch, so how can we block this a different way? But still look right. Miyagi, still look Cobra Kai. Like how? And um, but that's the thing with the vast amount of martial arts that we've incorporated into each of these different characters. Like Janelle was saying, like well this is a really cool move. Whose character can really do this the best, and whose does it fit the best? Let's incorporate that into there. So that kind of keeps it new and fresh. Yeah. So. That's, uh, it's just super bad our seeing all the, how fresh you keep everything. And like, yeah, there's always something new. And I'm always so, uh, I'm always in awe with seeing a new fight. Cause it's like, yeah, I haven't seen this. This is, <laughs> it's not just for the sense of story, but it's also the, the way you sequence it is proper cool. And, um, like even that finale, like the, the fight with Johnny and Crease and, Finally seeing Daniel and Kreese fight, like that was that was crazy. You can see the difference in the the style and everything. Did you did, I'm just curious with you watching that fight with uh, like you see Johnny and Kreese fight through all of that stuff and that's very, you know, Cobra Kai style. Yeah. Yeah. And when Johnny you can see it's a very traditional I mean uh, Daniel when he gets in there with Kreese to fight. That's like a big moment for anybody to see the two of them go at it. But I'm just curious, like when you're watching, it's very traditional, but did you notice that he almost was doing like the particular kata? They did very traditional kata. Yeah, with the, like that. All yeah. the moves in that was sort of built for that fight to show that off. And what oh, those, because we've never seen it being used actually in a fight. And so we incorporate that and built that into that fight to have him use Amazing. it. Yeah. So that was just, I was curious if you noticed that at all. <laughs> I think at first I didn't, but when I, I mean, I've seen that for nine gazillion times now, and I did like vaguely notice like when he gets his arms in that stance, and then he obviously has that little moment where he punches Crease, and then he says, you can't keep this defensive shit up forever. And then obviously they go into that window. Um, but yeah, I love the, the sense of, you can definitely see the differences in the style and, how distinct it is and yeah like you're like yeah this is 80s right here and then when you're seeing like miguel robbie fighting it's like yeah this is the fresh batch of yeah. new guys coming in um question for you both which is i don't know if you've been asked this before but i'll be surprised if you haven't which dojo would you see yourself in if you were in the show I am, a, my background is traditional japanese karate that's what i so Miyagi since i was a kid but I'm very Cobra Kai. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I, I, I might have to move over to Eagle Fang now because I'm just sticking with yeah, Cobra you go. Hawk, baby. That's <laughs> Hawk is my man. And so like that just like he's one of my favorite characters. 
of all time. And I enjoyed putting this together <laughs> for him and like uh, just him and Miguel, their characters together. And I like putting their fights together. Uh, that's, I guess, because I'm just okay. no. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for me, I because of my training in like Muay Thai and um, just the flavors of judo and being a little bit more, oh, I'd, I'd probably have to go with Cobra Kai. Yeah, I love that. I'm just we so curious them. what you said. We love them. Yeah, you go ahead. It's a lot of fun to to delve in, to jump into, and yeah. Just like, being a part of it, but my, like I said, my background is Japanese karate, so going into Miyagi Do is 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 easier for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like. Do you guys ever have like debates where like, uh, what's the best martial arts, or like, uh, like who is the best martial artist? Like, who do you guys think is like all time the best martial artist? And yeah, it's just the one you recognize the most. You just mean in general? Yeah, general. Oh. Completely, like, yeah, just every style incorporated. Uh, like, just generally, who do you feel is the best martial artist? Well, for me, my training, I um, started my martial arts training with uh, Guru and Asano in, um, uh, down in California. And um, he was Bruce Lee's right-hand man. So it was a lot of the Jeet Kune Do and mm. Silat and Kali and... So just having been through that system and really like respecting the philosophy and everything behind it as well, probably have to say Bruce Lee was, I mean, a great martial artist, a great mm -hmm. just philosopher, human being in general, and also such a badass performer. Like those old oh, movies are just like, I sometimes I'll go back and watch them for inspiration and see like, okay, what was he doing and how can we incorporate that into what we're doing? My, uh, oh. My all-time favorite is, um, it's going to be my father. He was my instructor since I was uh, a baby, and he's made me what I am today. So, And that's a Japanese traditional. Yoshu Kai Karate is the name of our system, and then that's what I grew up on my entire life. So he's my hero. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it definitely sounds like it runs in the family. You're just passing it down. <laughs> You're going to have to find your Daniel Sam now and teach him how to be the next karate kid. That's, um, I, that's awesome. Like, yeah, I mean, Bruce Lee is, uh, you know, he's like one of the forefathers of martial arts. And uh, uh, growing up, seeing him and, yeah, Jackie Chan, as you said earlier on, you know, uh, he's, um, these two are, obviously they have their different styles, but it's like someone that's very intense and then someone's got that that sense of, like, comedic, side to him with yeah. Jackie Chan. Um, do you know, I've read something uh, saying that Bruce Lee would have absolutely loved Cobra Kai because, like, he... I mean, he offset and stuff. I know he seemed like a really chill, funny guy, and uh, he doesn't take himself too seriously, although he's so amazing at what he does. But could you imagine someone like that in Cobra Kai, just someone like Bruce Lee, just appearing? Oh, my God. And... It would be incredible. Right. Um, and yeah, Jackie Chan, I know that obviously the Karate Kid, they did that reboot uh, and they refer to him. I think uh, Robbie uh, says something to Daniel when they're doing that training sequence, I think in season one, or I might be wrong, season two, but like he mentioned Jackie Chan. Um, <laughs> it, are, these guys are just, it's just amazing. Uh, these guys... Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I think, you're, I think your dogs want to be part of the, the martial arts debate. Be part of it. <laughs> They have something to say. Um, oh, it's just just amazing seeing uh, how they've inspired so many people, um, and obviously, like you, you guys as well. And um, what would you say is your all-time favorite martial arts movie? All-time favorite martial arts movie? Whew. Man, I have so many that I enjoy and love. Um, mm. All-time favorite martial arts movie. Oh god, the big one. So many. I mean, <laughs> we love the Ip Man's. Oh yeah. Yeah, who does it? Yeah, yeah. Those are great. I mean, even like I can I would consider John Wick a bit of a martial art. The first John Wick I thought was absolutely great. Oh, John Wick. Uh, I, my all-time favorite, honestly, is Karate Kid too. Like that for me, especially like as a young like 
teenage girl and you know the love story that happens with it. it just I remember I so, yeah. <laughs> favorite movies. I'm really into Hong Kong cinema action, and so any of Jackie Chan, any of Sammo Hung, all of all of those, uh, Yoon Byu, all of those guys. That's just like some of my all-time favorites, and it's hard to really pick one because there's all of them are so like. I'm, I'm just. I'll say Hong Kong action. That's kind of my. Yeah, it's iconic, man. Yeah, honestly. I think for me, like my childhood and stuff, Drunken Master with Jackie Chan was something I absolutely loved. Like the prospect of a drunk style is, is insane. <laughs> Can you imagine just imagine you're about to teach the Cobra Kai lot and then you just start drinking. They're like, uh, you know, Janelle, what are you guys doing? Like, we're supposed to train. He's like, oh, uh, you just get all drunk and you're trying to see. That's definitely a Johnny That's move. That's yeah. a Johnny Warren's <laughs> move for sure. <laughs> That'd be insane. Um, but, uh, I mean, the Karate Kid, like, um, honestly, what was it like the first time you were able to meet uh, Martin, Ralph, and William? Because, obviously, you guys grew up with this. What was that experience like for you? Man, that was so surreal. Um, outside of – even outside of Karate Kid, I'm, I was, I've always been a huge Ralph Macchio fan of, of, the, mm. of the older movies that he's done. I mean, Outsiders is one of my favorite movies. That's and, a huge one. Um, mm to be able to be in the same room with these guys, me telling them what to do <laughs> as far as putting punches and kicks together was so surreal. Um, but those, those guys are so, they're just real people and they, they're very uh, loving and enjoy what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it made everything not so like, I, I don't get like star crazy cause I work with a lot of different stars, but like, sure. Knowing the moment that I was getting to go and do Cobra Kai, <laughs> like I'm gonna get to meet Ralph, I'm gonna get to meet Billy. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> like it was really surreal. Yeah, early <laughs> on, he came in and he was like, "You'll never guess who I got a voicemail from," and I'm like, "Who?" And he was like, "Ralph Macchio." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would lose my shit if I had. Is that Ralph? Yeah. Daniel, the Daniel Larusso, <laughs> the freaking Kai kid. I would go crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, dude. She, tell them about the Emmys. Like, you, that was a cool moment for you. Oh, yeah. That's I, when we got nominated for season two for the Emmys. Ralph texted us both and was like, Hey, congratulations on the Emmy nomination. That's how I found out. I had no idea. So it was a really oh, like, awesome. That was cool. The, like, moment. the entire cast, like, everybody's so supportive. Everybody's so. Like, it really does feel like a family. And at the end of every season, I'm always just like, Oh, I love them all so much. I don't yeah. want to go work on this other movie because I just I want to see <laughs> this cast. But it's you it's, know it's always fun to come back to, and it just it really does feel like a family. Out of all the shows that I've done, this is one of the shows that I've actually become very close with the the cast outside of work itself. Um, mm. We we train sometimes outside of work where they're like, okay, we don't have to come in, but they come in anyways because they just want to train. Um, <laughs> And came out to Colorado to our home during the quarantine and hung out with us. And um, it's just a much more intimate thing that we've become so close with everybody on the show than I have on any other show. Mm. And you're basically like a, you're just an outside sensor for them, obviously teaching them, but you're like, you boys ever want to come around? Let's go train. <laughs> like literally. I love that. Um, I mean, I love the camaraderie with this, you know, production and, uh, you know, with the big three, you guys, the cast, you guys have such a tight knitted relationship. I love that. Uh, and every interview I've done, I just see the same thing, uh, that you guys just, yeah, you just uh, all besties. You all just get on, you love each other. Uh, and, um, it's just really good to see that, you know, it, there's no sort of, I, n I don't really see egos or anything like that with this production. It's just straight up people just getting on, uh, creating something great. And of course, here we are. And um, honestly, season three was just phenomenal. And it, it's a shame you, I heard you guys aren't going to be in season four. I mean, uh, working with everyone, that was, that's, that's really sad to hear because you guys have done so much with the cast and everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, we're, it's a bummer. Yeah. We're, not happy about that either. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Obviously, you know, it's probably not as much as, as anyone else, like, finding it out and stuff. But uh, 
it, it's just it sucks because you guys put in so much into this. You've obviously you you've sort of grown with these guys as well, and you've got to see them grow up, and you understand the show best. Um, but that's their loss, man. I mean, you, you know, people love what you guys do, so you. you know we'll continue to just see the great work that you guys do and. Uh, honestly, like it's just been, it's been, it's been a blast to talk to you guys. I just want to say that. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so no, much. this is really a lot of fun. Really, I really appreciate your time and everything. And yeah, I mean, screw them if Netflix don't want you back. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you guys are you're great. Um, if you don't mind, we actually have a few questions from yep. a few fans before we end this. Yeah. Uh, so what I like to do is. Uh, we have a few people normally. We come in one at a time, but we'll get we'll try and get maybe one or two people. Uh, so I put the link in, and they join and they ask you guys directly if you're cool with that. Oh, okay. cool. Yeah, 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 awesome. All right, you get some really you can get some really good questions, and sometimes I'm like, damn, I'm I didn't even ask that, you know. <laughs> All right, so okay, guys, if you want to ask a question for this amazing. Uh, duo, then don't be shy, you know, within reason, within reason. <laughs> don't be asking dumb questions, though. Ask something proper. Come on. <laughs> okay, let's see. Who's brave? Who's the first person to come in? Oh, we have we have two people. Oh, one of my regular viewers. What is up, Aaron? How's it going? Hey, Aaron. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hi. Good, man. How are you? I'm good. All right, what's your question, bro? So, out of the three dojos, um, what do you guys think is the best fighting style? Ooh, Ooh. best fighting style. They're all so Very different. <laughs> um, of course. And, you know, I don't know if Eagle Fang has really been around long enough to have its own style yeah. yet. I don't know. It'll be <laughs> yeah. It's Johnny's still trying to figure that out, so it's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, I think what's going to be interesting is to see how much Eagle Fang is, like, what parts of Cobra Kai and what parts of Miyagi-Do are um, built into it. So hmm. um, I definitely think that uh, Cobra Kai is the most exciting style to watch, but I also love... Like I love the watching the traditional katas, and I love how you know watching um, the Miyagi style. Uh, it, it almost looks like a dance, and it's so beautiful, and it's almost like yeah. a, like yeah. calming um, thing rather than just this just like amped up crazy fighting. So I don't know if I they're both the very best. effective. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have to pick one? <laughs> <laughs> At this game, Aaron's not going to leave until an answer. I mean, you could just say Kido Do. Just make one. <laughs> Janelle Kai. How about that? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you yeah. go. All right, that's a good question, Aaron. Uh, I feel like there wasn't even an answer. That's how good it was. But uh, thank you for coming on, man, uh, being the support and everything. Appreciate you. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, we got another regular. Sam, you're live. What's up, my man? Hi. How are we doing? Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Oh, I like your shirt. Yeah. Thanks, Love it. Reference got, got it last week for my birthday. Awesome. Oh, well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah. So, um, so what's your question? question? My question is, um, out of all the characters slash actors you've worked with throughout the entire show, who has been your favorite? The characters? Yes. You want to answer that? One? I mean, I really enjoyed working with Peyton List and developing the Tori character. I thought she was a, a great choice oh, for that great. character. And I really, like, I love seeing her journey, not only as a character, but also, you know, working with her and seeing her martial arts progress and change and that sort of thing. And, it was really cool in season three. They introduced the nunchucks and gave her, you know, a weapon. And I that just, was some Bruce Lee vibes right there when she does that move. I'm like, yo, she's channeling that Bruce Lee. Let me just tell you something. As soon as Peyton found out she was going to be doing nunchucks, 
I got her a training pair and it never left her hand. She would be <laughs> doing dialogue and like practicing with them. Like she never, and I will say on the day when we went to shoot that stuff, she never dropped them, not once. And she was on the money every single time. Damn, that's awesome. All right, Sam, thank you for coming on, man. That was a great question. Nice seeing you again, Shemaine. Thanks. Yeah, you too, man. Take care. Bye. All right, I think we'll take one more. Who have we got? We have... Ooh, who do we have? Corey. Corey, you're alive. What's up, my man? Hey, how's it going? Hi, Corey. How you doing? How are hey, you? Love, love the show. I mean, you guys do such an amazing job. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Like those fight sequences, they look so real and everything. I just want to say that. Um, my question is, out of all the fight scenes, which one was the most complex, you know, the most complex to initiate? It would definitely be... Something from season three. I, uh, actually, I, season one, I think, the, the tournament was really hard to do that many fights and make yeah. them all different that 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 sequence was really challenging it was a lot of people and a lot of fights and not a lot of time to shoot so yeah and it was really it's really hard to because tournament fighting if you watch tournament fighting it all looks the same <laughs> so to try and like choreograph all those fights and make them all look different i think was really challenging but and those couldn't be so violent like the other fights where they're really yeah, because as soon out. as you take a hit, you've scored a point. Yeah, so it so, was, yeah. Um, it's a more legal, a yeah. bit different balance on that. But I mean, for me, the the high school fight for season two was was a yeah, big challenge. Awesome. Most of our fights are a challenge because of time. We just don't have the time to shoot what we want to shoot. It makes it really tough. But mm -hmm. the high school was <clears throat> fight was 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 a big challenge. And trying to develop that was the first time we were going to do a oneer and see how many people we could put into that oneer and how far we could take it. Um, that was a, a, a big challenge. Oh, cool. Okay. All right, Corey, that's a very good question, man. Thank you for coming Thank on, you. man. Thank you for your nice time. Nice to see you. Thank You're you very welcome. much. Take care. Look okay. forward to season four. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys, that's a wrap. So, guys, thank you for coming on. Such All a pleasure, right, man. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thanks so, for having us. Yeah. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Uh, been such a blast talking to you, asking all the questions. Uh, I mean, yeah, good luck with everything going forward, Stranger Things, uh, your other projects. Uh, honestly, you guys, you're awesome. Love you guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you so appreciate, much. It. appreciate it. Have awesome. a good day. All right, guys. We'll see you later. All right. All right bye.